Hi guys, it's Belle here and I am back with day 28 of hashtag Shabby Creek tw Creep 24 created by um, Release the Craft In. There are several of us collaborating to bring you a piece of ephemera every day in the month of March, inspired by prompts and in a shabby creep style. So I will leave all that down below, including the other creators. Please do go check them out and my other two videos. This is my last video. Um, firstly, excuse the messy hands I have been crafting we are crafters um and uh also I'm just going to say I'm not an expert at this technique I'm showing you today um I still haven't quite got the hang of it but I still decided to come on video and share it with you because well, that's just who I am and I will be using a heat gun in this video I will try and edit it so you don't hear it but if I can't do that then just be aware, turn the sound down. So my prompt for today is stained glass. Now, when I thought of stained glass, I thought of windows. You know, there's beautiful windows you see in cathedrals and churches and old houses. But that just seemed a little bit too obvious for me um, because, yeah. So instead, I thought, OK, what other ways can glass be stained? And that's when I thought of over time, grunge, patina, dirt. And as I'm really going for a Victorian Gothic grungy style with my pieces, I thought that's what I am going for. So we are going to make um, a paper, an altered paper clip dangle for your journals. Um, and... I got the idea from thinking of the Victorians used to collect insects and they'd keep them behind glass cases. And if one of those glass cases was in an old house that was rotting and falling down and not clean, the glass would get really stained with dirt and grime over time. So that's what we are going for. That's the kind of staining. I've also used um, this butterfly. I've used a technique. Well, I've attempted a technique that released the crafting did in a recent video I will leave it down below um and I have done my version because I didn't want to I think they burnt some of the pieces of the butterfly and I also only used half a wing on here I'm not going to show you how to do that today go check out their video that'll show you what we are going to do today is this we are going to make one of these dangles I'm going to show you a light, so be aware that a torch is going to shine up towards you now so you can really see the stained glass effect. So this is what we are going to make. Again, disclaimer, I am no good at jewellery making or wire wrapping or any of that stuff. Now, use what wire you have. I found that the really, really thin wire just breaks too much. I don't know what gauge this is. This is just some wire I had in my craft stash. And to be honest, this also has a plastic coating. It's probably better if your piece of wire doesn't have a plastic coating, but I have found it has worked for me. Now, to actually make the shape, I have been using several things. For a rounded shape, I've just used a glue stick or a glue bottle to wrap around. For a rectangular shape, although this goes in at the edge, I used the lid of one of my nail polishes. For this little square shape, I am using one of my mini stamping um, uh, stamping what they called acrylic stamp blocks <laughs> words what are they I have to say guys I'm not very well at the moment I um, had a bit of an accident and ended up in hospital I'm okay don't worry I'm out now but um, yeah <laughs> I was worried about if this video would get done in time, but it is, we're doing it, so let's just go. So yeah, so you can see that I wrapped it round, sorry if that was quite fast, I twisted it so that we have this twisted edge, um, twist it quite tightly, and then you can pull it off. Now I am also using this mat which is reflective, again, it has to be that way, that's what I'm doing. So I'm using tea bags because I like the effect. If I have inked this up with Oxide Spray Vintage Photo and Crex Pistachio, if you haven't got inks, watercolours would work. Um, other ink pads would work. If you actually wanted it clear, this is using a tea bag that has no inking on it. 
but the embossing powder I used was a really old one so it had these black flecks in it as well and you can see I've used a piece of ephemera but we are going to use this tea bag you can also use a napkin you know the white piece of napkins that we pull off when we're decoupaging you can also use those um, I just like tea bags because it gives me a more translucent thinner look to it so that's what I like to use so we're going to use this and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ink this up using my Versamark um, watermark stamp embossing stamp because I want a thin layer I'm going to move this onto here now I want a thin layer of actually no I need this underneath what am I doing of embossing powder on here because it just helps to strengthen did I say this wasn't my idea this technique I actually saw it came across it on an Artie Mays video a while ago I will link that video down below so this isn't my technique and she's much better at it than I am but this is what we're doing so I'm going to use oh do you know what I haven't done skip that actually I will come back to that what haven't I done guys do you know what I haven't done I haven't stamped an image on it oh so I am using stamp your image first guys I'm using the entomology kit by uh, Stampers Anonymous and I'm actually going to use the little block if I can now find where I've put that the little block use a permanent ink pad if you are stamping first um, so I've got my stays on I tell you been poorly so I haven't been filming and I haven't even been able to craft um, so yes yeah, stamp your image wherever you want it I'm going to put it here really stamp that down okay um, yeah so we're going to stamp that image and then we're going to put a very very thin layer of embossing powder because napkin and um, tea bag is quite thin so when you're trying to attach the metal and the uh, embossing powder it can be a bit of a problem so I like to put a very thin layer of embossing powder on first because it just strengthens it now there are easier ways to do this guys <laughs> um Artie Mays does it in an easier way and you could also I have seen uh, someone glue their uh, metal frame onto their piece why would I do that it seems far too simple actually it wasn't that it's because mine's got a plastic coating being able to glue it was taking forever again this might reflect guys but um I've just dropped my embossing powder um thankfully it's okay uh so I'm sorry if this is reflecting but I need to use this surface so I'm going to use my heat gum to just um melt this first layer so you can see already we are getting that translucent glass effect and now it's much um like this just bends whereas this has a bit more stability and you can hear it so now what I want to do is I want to put another layer on and this is how I am doing it you can see I'm just so um <laughs> everything's so perfect <laughs> so I'm going to put another layer on and then as this layer is melting that's when I'm going to attach so get your wire nearby that's when I'm going to put this on honestly guys embossing powder gets everywhere so I'm going to use my heat gun again and it's As that is still kind of wet that you want to stick your metal frame around 
the image. I'm going to melt it again just slightly. And now I'm going to quickly press it. And press it down so there's only two layers. You can get extra thick embossing powder which would probably work much better but you can see already. And yeah, you can see the colours, but you can see my fingers through the colours. So you can see some of that green or brown. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put some of the embossing powder, just a thin layer. I'm using a spoon to do this because it just works easier for me. A thin layer. I don't even care if it's slightly over the, the um, metal. I don't care about that. So I'm doing a thin layer and making sure to get into all those corners with it and press it down. And then this time, make sure you've got something you can hold it with because this will get hot, especially as you're working with metal and that. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to heat it from below. So let's see if you can actually see that on here. Again, press it while it's still hot. So heating it from below means that the embossing powder isn't flying everywhere when you're doing this. Take it off the paper. I need to remember not to put it on the paper because it's wet, uh, sticky, it will stick to the paper. So you can see. Now again, you could do another layer of this got a little hole in it actually I quite like that um, you could do another layer of embossing powder on there but I don't think this needs it I'm just going to melt there's a little bit there so I'm just going to melt that okay and I'm going to use this to press it down this time because there's embossing powder all over my pad. Again, other people can do much better versions of this, but it is what it is. So yes, yeah, so there's my stained glass. I want it looking dirty. Let's see what it looks like with the light through it. So I'm bringing the torch again, just be aware. So I don't know if that actually works, but you can see all the kind of tea bag staining as well as the ink. So it's stained as in dirty. So you need to leave that to dry for a little while. So whilst that is drying, we are now going to get on with making the altered paper clip bit. So I have a few bits and bobs and some fabric and bits. Let's bring them all over to here. Okay, so you can see on the one I made, I had one of these, which is just using a piece of cardboard and then attaching a number on. But I already had one made up where, again, I'm not like showing you how to make the whole paper clip, but again, it was a piece of cardboard. I'll actually show you where it was from. Hold on. Okay, so these are the uh, quote chips labels by Tim Holtz. Now, these are quite thick. I'll show you. So they are quite thick and I don't like using them that thick. So what I tend to do is I tend to pull off a bit and then I'm left with a bit like this and they've got different shapes. And then that's the bit that I then ink around and then you can either use an, um, a piece of ephemera you've got like labels, uh, numbers, digitals, like I've got all sorts in here like... These numbers are great, um, but this is actually a piece of stamped um, ticket ephemera. Let's see if I can find it. I made these, and so I just cut a piece to size, glued it on there. I thought that looked quite good, actually. I might actually put a word on there, like a rub-on. 
we need our paper clip. Let's do our paper clip first. Okay, so let's do that. And I am going to use some vintage music paper because I like it. And again, it reminds me of old houses, Victorians and pianos and all that good stuff. And then I'm going to use my walnut stain just to really distress up the edges of that. Oh, sorry, knocked you there. So yeah, so that's where my mind went when I thought of stained glass. I have to say, this was the prompt that stomped me the most. And I'm really glad that I changed the idea of the window because um someone else used the exact same uh die that i was going to use for my window where is my glue okay so yeah i mean obviously we would have been doing two different things but that's not the point i'm just glad that i thought oh no let's try something else um and I just want this to be, yeah, coming from an old house, falling apart. No one's cleaned it in ages. Now, realistically, I should use alcohol inks on this because this is quite a gold um, paper clip. But as most of it's going to be covered up, you can see I'm just wrapping that paper around. I've glued the paper. I like mine to be quite, and you need a loop at the top and a loop at the bottom. I like mine to be quite thick. So I don't mind. I'm going to tear that off. There we go. Ink up a little bit more. I mean, to be honest, you're not going to see most of it because it's going to be under fabric. And then I've got this kind of dark purpley sari silk, which I love. So I'm going to use, it's got a beautiful frayed edge. And oh, there's a piece from the music paper. I'm going to fray it even more. Yes love it and that is also going to be wrapped around to give a little bit of fabric on here like so i mean i was going to make another tag as well but i thought oh i've already made a tag so let's do something more simple I say simple, making the actual glass thing is not that simple. But um, it's actually, once you get the use to it and once you've got like everything you need um, and you're in the hang, you're getting into the hang of it. I mean, it took me a few goes to know how to do it. But then, um, yeah, then it becomes easier. So I've also got some of this grungy kind of dyed cheesecloth so I want some of this why did I try and rip that oh, this shows you guys how tired I am because I just tried to tear cheesecloth like you do fabric no Belle that's not how cheesecloth and I was about to do it again that's not how cheesecloth works Belle so I love the grunginess of this and we are going to or I am going to you could add whatever you wanted to yours. I'm just going to tie mine in a double knot. You could add um, like a metal embellishment onto the top of it. You could add more fabric. You could add more paper. I mean, whatever. Why is that sorry silk moving? Because it hasn't stuck yet, Belle. Um, whatever it is that you want to add to the top of your paper clip, you can do. Once you start making them, you start to realise that, like, you can do anything with them. I really like making altered paper clips, actually. And I'm going to do a double knot. And then I am going to cut some of this because I really want to fray it and have it gosh excuse the mess down here guys i'm going to pull it apart like so so i really want to fray that i want to grunge that up like so love it where on earth did the pin to my glue go that's not great um hold on so yes yeah. So that is, sorry, I'm just putting a lid on my glue. Oh, why won't that go in? 
Okay, so that is that bit. Now again, I've got the other half of that butterfly wing. I love this technique. Um, and I've also used embossing powder on it, which Release the Crafting also used, I believe, um, which also gives it this stained glass effect. Um, and then I've inked and used sprays on the back. So that is going to go there. But before that does, I need to find... Hold on, guys, I need to find my cropper dial. Okay, so I found my cropper dial and I'm just going to put um, a small hole in the top of this butterfly and then get an eyelet, one that will hopefully go with the um, style that I'm going for, and then move that there. Oh my goodness, I'm honestly all fingers and thumbs today guys. Sorry that keeps making a noise but it is what it is because I'm working on a glass mat. So that is that. So we've got an eyelet in that now. And I'm that will be added. And then we've got this. But I also want to add some beads onto here. So I'm going to get one of my loops. Trying to find all my bits and pieces that I need. Find one of my loops. I also had some fabric behind this. So on the other one, which I really like. So I've got some old lace old black lace again tatty it's all good doesn't have to be cut in a perfect um shape or anything and again i can just like pull at that and tear that up a little bit so that can go on there i've also got some of this white lace that might go quite nice let's cut that and stick that on there too that can go behind that and it also, it almost looks like a butterfly's wing. So it kind of goes with the um, theme. Okay, so I am going to use a large loop to go through all of that. So here, and I'm just going to put the loop through the holes in the lace. I'm not going to put brads or anything like that. I'm just putting holes through the lace okay so i'm going to do that like that and then close that up so we've got some lace we've got a bit we've got a butterfly's wing i've got some beads that i want to use some dangles let's have a look in here I've got all sorts of bits and bobs um now this is what I was looking for. It's off an old necklace, but it's already got like loads of beads on here. So I wouldn't need to like do much more to it. I'm trying to work around which way it goes. I think it goes this way. And I thought that might go quite well hanging. Or will it hang better off here? Or even just hang in the middle i don't know about that one yet so i also have some of these i thought that might quite go well this nice brown one maybe it's quite cute a little bead i'm overthinking now guys i'm going to use this one so let's just attach that again let's find a loop that i think is a good enough size We'll go with this one. There we go. We've got this can go through there. Ah, uh, all fingers and thumbs, all fingers and thumbs. So there we go. And that's going to go on there like so. So that'll hang down that will go on there all right let's get some chain added to some of these i want a large loop for everything being attached to on here so 
let's have this and this can be just attached through the loop actually no I'm gonna add another loop or a chain it doesn't have to be that big then okay and the stained glass is almost dry guys <laughs> I just like to leave it to dry for a little bit so that I know that it's definitely um, sturdy for when I start cutting and moving it around. So again, let's do this. Let's do it here. Make sure that is closed up. Again, jewelry making is not my thing, so it is what it is. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. Need a big enough loop. I think I've used all my favourite loops up, which sucks a little bit, but there we go. I'm going to put a loop through here and then a loop through there. So we already have that one on there. Now I'm going to add a bit of a chain to the butterfly so it's hanging a bit lower. So let's cut um, this maybe about here. And then we can attach that. Onto there. And onto here. like so and then this needs to be attached to our flutter by I might need a bigger one than that okay so it needs to go through there and there we go and then that would go onto the chain Great Fleet with Max song. <laughs> Come on. Um, like so. So now we have both of these hanging. Got some lace, got our flutter by, we've got some beads, and now, excuse the mess, guys. Now we're going to bring this over. It's nice and dry. You can tear, I even like the sound of that crunching. Um, you can tear it, but you get, like, you can tear it like that, but you get a better sort of cut. Well, you get a cleaner. It looks cleaner when it's been cut. That's the word I'm trying to say. Although you might like that overly grungy look with a bit left. Like so. And yeah, so this is reminding me of a bug behind some glass. Now, obviously, I need to try and manipulate this so that it becomes a loop again I'm not great at these things guys so there are plenty of tutorials out there I'm just doing my thing so we've got a loop and where was that bead that one that I really liked the look of that I might also attach onto the glass Let's see, this was here and then that, yeah, yeah, I quite like it. Or I'll attach it through a loop. So let's again go for loop, loop, loop. And we're going to put the stained, or oh, maybe we'll put the, yeah, we'll put the stained glass on. And then maybe I can attach another loop for the other bit, right, but we're also going to use this 
chain here which is slightly different i like when i'm doing dangles and things to use slightly different chains because it's just something um i like the effect that it gives so i'm just cutting that there and then this can go through the loop is that too low down it might be i might want it further up let's close that up and then if we have this with everything at its full length then i can work out where i want to put this i think i want it a bit if it's all the way down there i don't like it so i'm going to cut a bit more off here yeah i really go for measurements guys <laughs> no um and i think I think what I'm going to do, make sure it's the right way around, is I'm going to add this further up the um, the chain. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to see where the opening is. Okay, we've got that. And then we can do it further up so we can do it, make sure it's the right way around again. So then maybe up here. Need to look at the loop, guys. Sorry. This might be too thick to go through this loop. No, no, got it through, got it through. Push that together, make sure it's properly closed. So there we have, see this is what the back looks like. And there's the front with our insect. And then that can attach onto that loop. And then I'm thinking I might put a rub on on here. You could probably use rub ons on the um, Right, I need to find the top of the chain. Here it is. Uh, on the actual embossing. Okay. And then this has to go through there. Like so. Like this. We've got our stained glass, our butterfly's wing, beads, a bit of everything. And let me just grab my rub ons guys. Okay, I'm trying to find one that says something else on it. Hold on. Okay, so I wanted the um, the specimen ones because you know we're dealing with bugs now do i want handle with care quite like that we could have another bug actually on there couldn't we so we could have a larger bug on there i think i might um, where's the scissors gone? Well, if we put this one on there, then I can have specimen on there as well, can't I? No, I want the bigger bug. So I'm just going to cut this out. Now I'm going to put that on this bit. So yeah, stained glass as in dirty, manky, yucky <laughs> glass. That's what I wanted to go for. Rather than beautiful, pretty windows. Um, so we've got the creepy aspect with the bugs and the grunge. And we've got the shabby aspect because it's old looking. And um, also the lace and stuff on there i'm just wondering if i'm going to be able i'm going to give it a go so these little ones that say fig with the um number 
I am going to try to put one of those on the image itself on the stained glass so I don't know how this is going to work so I'm going to be very careful rubbing that on I'm going to use my nail to do it I do obviously have the tools as well but this is fragile oh my gosh yes that's gone on there guys look oh I like that even more now now I just want to add more, more, more. Um, okay, why is that sticking down there? I don't want to waste any of them. I do have the word specimen and I did want specimen somewhere. Could have it going like across there. Have I got the word specimen in smaller? Yeah, I do. Okay, let's cut that. because I want it to be almost like this is a specimen. They've gone out, collected it, and um, put it as part of their collection. That's what I'm thinking anyway. I'm gonna put it over the number actually on there. like so okay let me just clear all this up and I'll be able to show you what it looks like okay guys so here you are this is my completed altered paper clip um, again go check out release the crafting's video and how to kind of grunge up and burn and emboss like these butterflies and all sorts and they do a much better job this was my first attempt and this is my stained glass piece now I'm going to bring it up because I'm hoping you'll see some of the green bring it right up can you see there some of the green from the pistachio let's move the beads can you see that guys and the brown and the grunge and it has got a little hole in it and I kind of love it and then we've got all the other dangles and beads and a bit of lace and everything. So let's just have a look at the other one as well. So I did slightly different beads to that one as well. Um, and now I'm going to definitely add a figure eight on there or a rub on on there so that's that one um again you can do larger ones like this and i'm trying to find the clear one and here's a clear one that's completely clear and see-through using um tea bag but with no ink on it and I have used dried flowers as well, but I just really like the stamp image and the kind of look of it all. So, as I said, I got this technique from Artie Mays, so go check out her video, check out Release the Craftings, and check out everyone else's videos for Shabby Creep. We're almost at the end. Tomorrow, I believe it is Cindy over at um, uh, Studio Lou. So I will leave the link to hers down below let me know what you think I know it was a bit haphazard like I said I've been a bit poorly but I do really love the effect I have tried it with dried flowers but I'm going to be honest I kind of love the stamped look um and it just makes such a great little piece and you can see through it and everything which I kind of just love just like a window like the old old windows that have got dirty and grotty so yeah so there's my altered paper clips um, I really hope you like this video. Let me know down below. And yes, I'm sure there's much easier ways I could have done the embossing and stuff and the wire work. But that's not my thing. I'm learning slowly. Um, and thinking about it, you could do something similar with um, cellophane packaging. You know, from a piece of craft supply if you've got cellophane packaging and a stays on um a permanent ink pad you could uh use the stamped image on there and then glue wire 
around it if you've got a glue that works really fast and works well so if you haven't got tea bags or inks or embossing powder that's another way you could do it but there we go guys that's it for now thank you so much for watching please do like and subscribe if you haven't already and wherever you are in the world i hope you're having lots and lots of crafty fun and i'd just like to say this has been a great challenge to be part of don't forget to check everyone else out there's still a few days left and um yeah i've really really loved all the pieces i might do a quick video at the start of april where i kind of share with you the three pieces i did just in case you missed them and you can see how well they work together okay bye for now guys